Okay, I uh, hope this tutorial goes well. This is something I've done a number of times, but it's not something I do too often. Uh, but hopefully I'll be able to explain it well and clearly and uh, show you some hurdles you might hit in doing this. Um, if you've been watching this series, and hopefully you have, if you haven't, there should be an annotation on the screen that will bring you to the playlist. Uh, you can watch the playlist, um, and sh I'm showing basic ways of repackaging the same program to run on multiple operating systems, um, whether it be a mobile device like Android, iPhone, uh, Windows Mobile or on desktops such as Linux, Mac, or Windows. Um, and so far, uh, most of what I've shown has been cross-platform, uh, either using Python or C++. Uh, and once you do that, uh, it's a matter of recompiling or sharing the proper libraries, and your code will run on all those operating systems. I showed you one way recently in the last uh, video or video before that to turn your HTML file into an HTA file, which in Windows will uh, make it seem more like an application. So here's the program we made in the first part of this uh, series. Um, but you can see it, it's running It's running in a browser, but not really. I mean, it, it doesn't have your toolbar. It's basically, I'm pretty sure, using Internet Explorer as a back end. But it gives you more options, as I showed in the previous video, working with this on how the border looks, whether you have an icon. So it gives it more of a, a local application feel, even if it's a web app. Um, so, but that is having these multiple files and uh, having it be an HTA file with this default icon. Um, but today we're going to package all that into a exe file, which is basically a self-extracting exe file that will run our uh, program. Um, this is the benefit of one, having everything in one package instead of multiple files, and two, it it uh, people are more likely to realize that the exe is an executable rather than an HTA. Um, so we're going to do this. There's multiple ways. There's lots of ways out there to make self-extracting zip files. Um, some proprietary, some open source. Um, there's benefits and drawbacks to using this technique. Uh, but we're going to use 7-zip. Why? Because one reason 7-zip itself is cross-platform and also is at least somewhat open source under a GNU uh, LGPL plus some UNRAR restrictions. I haven't gone into uh, looking into exactly what the licenses are, but at least it's somewhat open source, if not completely. Um, well, I, I guess it's completely open source, but is it truly free software? I'm not sure. Uh, I haven't read the entire license, but anyway. On your Windows machine, you'll download, you'll go to uh, 7-zip.org and you will download this exe for their window, for Windows machines and install it. And then that will give you the, uh, their manager for creating 7-zip files. Uh, also, while you're here, go to the download link and you'll want to download this uh, uh, 7-z uh, file that has the 7-z libraries SFX for installers, because we're going to be creating an installer, and uh, really this is used for creating installers. We're actually going to just make it a standalone application, so there's going to be some tweaks we need to make, because uh, by default this technique is supposed to extract everything to a temporary file and then run an installer that moves everything where it's supposed to go, which is kind of what we're going to do, but we're going to skip the actual visual installer part and just open our application. So once you've downloaded and unzipped that file, uh, within that uh, file, there is a file called 7zs.sfx. I've already extracted that file into the same folder as our project. Um, also in here, I have created a config.txt. Let's open that up. And uh, I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to exactly how this is written out. But basically, you write this out like this in here. And if you Google this, there's actually a whole lot of options you can put in here for different things when it comes to uh, your installer. Um, but our, this, this part of our application, since our application is so small, you're not even going to see this up on the screen. So even though we're saying a title, you're not going to see that title. And even though there should be a progress bar, you're actually not going to see the progress bar because it's going to go so fast. But if you were, there's a lot of options out there that we're not going to get into. Now, this installer needs to run some sort of executable file. Um, which an HTA is not considered an executable file. Really, um, two that I know of are either an exe file, which if we already had, uh, we wouldn't have to worry about this, or a batch script. 
Um, so we have a batch file here. I'm saying we're going to create a file called batch one, which we're going to create right now. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say file new. And what I'm going to do for right now, I'm just going to say echo hello world. Really, the script will be the one that actually moves our project to a, a separate temporary file and then runs it. Uh, and then I'm going to pause that. We will now save this as is we have to change this to all files and say one dot bat for a batch file save it if we come in here and double click that you can see it runs it prints out hello world and then pauses doesn't really matter uh whether we have echo on or off in this particular case because once again this particular program is going to be so small that you'll see this flash on the screen real quick and go away before our actual application opens up um so now that we have that uh, just as an example, let's select all, but then we'll deselect our SFX file and our uh, TXT file. I am going to then right click the left the files that are left, go down to 7-zip since I installed the 7-zip manager. This now appears in my drop down menu here, and I'll add it to list.7z. Uh, 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 the name list, it doesn't really matter what it's called, it just by default pick that because that's what our folder we're currently in is called. So basically we have this 7-zip file, which anyone can extract and get these files out of. But what we're going to do is we're going to take this file, this file, and this file, and combine them all in an executable file. Basically this is like the header of the executable, this is telling it how to run, and then this is what it's going to extract. So we're going to do this by opening up our, our shell here, or our terminal, CMD, uh, navigating to the folder that we're currently, our project is in, and then we're going to run this command. Copy, space, forward slash B, the name of our SFX file, uh, which since it's in the current directory is just the name of that. If it's in a different directory, you can give the full path to it. Plus config.txt plus list.7z, because that's the name of our 7z file. And then we want our, what our executable to be called. So in this case, I'm going to call it list.exe. Basically, since most of my viewers are Linux users or probably maybe Mac users or other Unix-based or like um, operating systems, um, this is like concatenating, using cat to put all these files into one file. Uh, we'll hit enter there. It has now created an exe file. It gives it this installer icon. It's getting that from this SFX file. And now if we were to double click this. Oh, it opened just behind me. Okay. Uh, it opens up this uh, shell, this terminal screen that ran our batch one file. That's great. Now what we want to do is actually have it run um, our, our HTA file. Uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to go into our batch file here. Oop, not that one, this one. <laughs> and instead of echo hello world, we're going to change that to say start uh, index.hta, which is our HTA file right here. And start basically is like, forking. It's, it's starting a new process, which would be this index.hta. Uh, and then pause will pause that script, which we're going to get rid of in a minute, but I just want to show you this. So again, we'll uh, delete both our executable and our 7-zip file here. Select all of these except for um, uh, our config and our SFX file. And we will right click and create a new list 7z file and we'll run that copy command again we create a new exe now when we double click and run it you can see we get our our application here and it works great it's running out of a temporary file now our folder now and we have but we still have our terminal screen open here because i put that pause command so you might think oh we'll just get rid of that pause command and that will close in the background since we're starting a new process here well Let's give that a try. And obviously, you can tell by the tone of my voice, that's not going to work. So uh, we'll delete our zip file and our exe file. Once again, select everything but those two. Put them into a list.7z file. And recreate our exe file. Now, when you run it, oh, we get our HTA window, but nothing in it. And the reason is, before this has a chance to load, since our batch script has done has finished running, it has now deleted the temporary folder. So those files no longer exist. 
So what we actually need to do uh, in this case is before the batch scripts ends running, we're gonna have the batch script copy everything out of the temporary folder into a new temporary folder. Uh, at least this is my solution to this. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to say X copy, not just copy because we do have a folder in here and the regular copy command in Windows cannot co copy uh, uh, recursively, but X copy can. And um, I may have to look at my notes here real quick. Yep, that's what I thought. Okay, X copy. Uh, asterisk for everything uh, and then we're going to copy it. Well first let's make a folder to copy it to. So I'm going to make directory dot dot backslash because we're in Windows and we're going to say my app. So we're creating a directory here and then we're going to say copy everything from this directory into my app directory forward slash e uh, I think that's saying recursively, I believe. And then we're going to start our dot dot slash my app and then our index. So basically we are creating a new directory uh, above the directory we're in. And then we're going to copy everything from the current directory, which is a temporary directory, into that directory. Then we'll start it and then we'll exit out of the batch script. So we'll save that. Hopefully I did everything right in there. If not, I'll have to check my notes real quick because I don't work with batch files very much. Used to, 10 years ago. Um, let's see. Once again, we will create our zip file here. And really, you can see this is real easy as far as creating our executable file. I'm just showing you some hurdles you might hit and the solutions I came up with to get them. Because once again, this is designed to run an installer and we're not really running the installer, we're just running our application. Double click that. And this is the problem we're gonna come into. And this, I, let, let, me, let me redo that. <laughs> yes, and that. Remove both these files. Instead of my app, because as you saw that folder already exists, I'll say my, my app. Uh, P. Well, I'll do with three P's there. Save that. Again. Oops. Put all those in there. Run our copy command again. Now, when we run, hey, look, we don't have the terminal window and we have our application, which is working. Great. Let's run it again. We get an error. The reason we get an error, or at least a warning, is that the file, the folder we created already exists. So it's asking, are you sure you want to override that? And although there are options when you're copying to just say yes, um, another solution, which might be a good solution, is um, this option here. So what I'm doing here is I'm creating a random number and I'm setting the variable x to that. And then instead of just calling the folder my app, I'm calling it my app and then that random number. So every time this script runs, it will create a new folder with a random number at the end. So you're not going to accidentally overwrite information that's already there. Because uh, the chances of you calling up the same random number uh, more than once in a session is unlikely. Um, so we're just saying instead of my app, we're saying my app. And in Windows, percent %x% percent is how you call the variable. And we do that for all three of these lines. I will save that batch file over the old one. Let's remove these two. Create our new 7-zip file. Run our copy command. And now we have this executable we can give to anybody because all these other files are already in it. They can click it. They get that little terminal, uh, terminal screen for a second, but it doesn't really matter. They're not really going to see it there. And then, uh, and then your application opens up and runs. And so that is one way of packaging uh, a self-extracting executable file in, in Windows. Now, like I said, there are a lot of other ways that some people might find more simple. There are GUI interfaces to create stuff like this. I know uh, WinZip does. Some of those are proprietary programs. I personally don't like using proprietary programs. This process is pretty simple. It's basically creating a config file and then running this copy command. Pluses to using this technique 
is one, you can do the same exact thing in Linux. So if you have your, your, your project, your HTML file, you can rename your HTML file to .hta, uh, and then you can create a 7-zip file in, in Linux, and then instead of copy, you can just use cat, and what you can do is you can cat all these files like so, into an exe file so you're piping it into or redirecting it into an exe file so that's a plus of using this technique as long as you have you download this uh, sfx file and the, and you create this config file which is a plain text file you can now create these exes for windows on your linux side without having to open up windows obviously you'd want to go and test it on a windows machine um, but once you create your installer to your basically your batch file um, it should stay pretty much the same so you can update it without having to go into Windows if you don't want to. Although, like I said, it's always good to test it. So that's one plus. Another plus, using a self-extracting zip file like this for, as your executable, and I think the same would be if you made a self-extracting zip file with something like WinZip, is that if you're in Linux, you could, in most cases, extract that as a zip file. So if I was to give this exe file to someone on Linux, um, they don't need to install Wine or anything. They could just extract it with their archive manager or whatever zip application they have, and they would ha then have this folder, and they can click on the HTML file in it, and it would open up in their web browser. So once again, not really getting that application feel because it's opening up in a window, but it is there as an option. People can open it up and, and at least pick it apart if they want to. So those, those are some pluses to this technique. Um, once again, some of you are going, oh, oh, you're doing it the hard way. You're doing it the hard way. There's, there's GUI applications. Well, you know what? GUI applications can't automate stuff. Once I've done this once, I can write a script that would automate it. And I could write a shell script in Linux that would create this exe file and something for Linux and maybe something cross-platform all with one click. Every time I modify the program, boom. So, I mean... This may seem more difficult to some people, but people who know what they're doing, it's actually a lot simpler once you get it set up. It takes a little more setup, but easier to do. Um, so that is one way of creating a self-extracting zip file, a self-extracting exe on Windows or for Windows, whether you're on Windows or not. You can do this from any operating system. Um, and But I'll show you another way that is perhaps a simpler way with tools that are built into Windows already that you may not know about. Um, and again, like I said, I know I'm probably going to get a lot of comments. There are a lot of programs out there for making uh, uh, self-extracting exe files and installers. I'm not saying this is the best. I'm just saying this is the one I use. It's the smallest because a lot of those are large applications that you have to install these big old applications and have all these settings and I really don't care about them I just want to run my program so it's just one option I'm not saying it's necessarily better than others just better in certain situations I'm just trying to get that out of the way so I don't get all these these hate comments because you get those on YouTube anyway so I hope you found this tutorial useful and uh, I'll once again the next video will show you a simpler way using built-in tools, although uh, it, it's simpler depending on what you're doing. So I thank you for watching, and I hope that you have a great day. Please visit my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. And once again, I hope that you have a great day.